Hello everyone, happy Thursday. I'm thinking about doing a video every Thursday and calling it Thursday Thoughts. So let me know what you think if you want uh, live videos about topics like this, and if so, what topics you want covered. But today, um, someone mentioned having a negative relationship about food. So I was thinking, why don't I pop on really quickly and do a video, hey guys, hey Julie, um, and answer this question. How do I break the negative cycle around food? And let me just say really quickly, there's probably like so much more in depth that I could go with this. Um, and this is not something for a lot of people that is going to happen overnight. And it is also something that the strategy may vary a little bit depending on the issue at hand. Like, do you actually have an eating disorder or, um, you know, are you eating too much? Are you eating not enough? So there's different strategies that would come in depending on your own individual history. Um, but there are some kind of general guidelines I think that can apply to everyone that can be really helpful. So I'm going to start there. Hey, whoever's on, I can't see who you are. So go ahead and like the video or pop on. Hi, Angel. We're going to talk about this probably tomorrow a little bit. So, okay. So number one is to stop the all or nothing cycle. So one thing that I run into a lot is, um, I don't know if this is like a female thing. I work primarily with women, but I, uh, have worked, you know, I'm working, there's a guy in my get gutsy group right now. And, you know, um, but I think sometimes women are like all or nothing. Like we really like to get things done. We really like to have our lives controlled and, um, we just kind of go like hardcore all or nothing in a lot of aspects of our lives. But you can't really do that with food. And the reason you can't do that with food is because this is what happens. When, and I see this all the time. After coaching for so many years and working with so many different kinds of people, I see women that are like, I'm totally in. I'm 100% in. And they like, they're like, I'm eating salads every day for like a week. And they do it. And then like the next day, they're, they don't have a plan or whatever or something in their life happens. And then boom pint of ice cream down the hole, okay? And it can't just be a couple bites of ice cream, it's like a whole thing, right? Like, we did something that maybe threw us off, or our schedule changed, or something stressed us out, or whatever it is, and because we got off the wagon, we didn't just like dip our toes off the wagon, we like full-fledged, like flipped off, barreled off, jumped off into the deep end off the wagon. Right? So like so many times that's true. So the whole all or nothing, like I'm either going to be perfect or I'm not even going to try. Like when you say it that way, it sounds so stupid, doesn't it? But in reality, like that's what we approach nutrition and health with. Well, if I can't go to the gym five times a week, why bother? Well, because two is better than zero. And if I can't make a homemade dinner every single night of the week, then why bother? Well, because four times a week when you can, when you do have time is like a thousand times better than not at all. So it's really, really important to kind of find the balance um, and to stop kind of having the all or nothing. And, and within the all or nothing, it's kind of the binge mentality, right? Like I can never, ever, ever have ice cream again. Why would you ever say that? Like, just don't, just don't tell yourself these things, okay? Don't label something as, I can never eat this again, because as soon as you say, I can never eat it, guess what you're gonna want? It's like ingrained in our humanity that what we can't have is what we want the most. So don't tell yourself, I'm never gonna have this ever again, okay? Unless you're like me and you're like 100% cold turkey and you can just do it. But for 99% of the people in the world, if you tell yourself that you can't ever have something again, that's all you're gonna think about and you're gonna want it. It's that apple, right? Hi, how are you doing? So within that, don't tell yourself all or nothing. Within that, there are some guidelines that you have to follow in order to help yourself psychologically, physiologically, and biochemically, right? There are some factors that come in that really help you be successful or not. So one of the things that I encourage everyone is to ditch the foods that cause um, cravings, that stimulate your brain, that 
amp up your appetite and that mess with your hunger and full signals, okay? So when I say don't tell yourself you can never have a chocolate chip cookie ever again, that's true. Like I absolutely eat chocolate chip cookies and brownies and I love that. However, and this is what I train my clients and this is how I help them. I always say I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want, as long as it's made with the right ingredients. So there are some educated choices that I make so that I never have to tell myself I can't ever have this again. In order to do that, I just say I can have that whenever I want, I just need to change the ingredients. And the reason the ingredients are important, because you'll hear a lot of people say, you know, 90, 10 or 80, 20 or whatever, and they don't clarify, like within that 10 or 20, it's a free for all. You can do whatever you want. You could go to Starbucks and have whatever you want. You could go to McDonald's and have whatever you want. You know, and I, I don't fall within that category. So I do say you can always have a, a cookie, but it has to be made with the right ingredients. And the reason that this is so important is because what I see women and, and people in general, but what I see women struggle with constantly is addiction, sugar addiction, food addiction. It's very hot cravings. It's extremely hard to be successful and to be consistent when your body is working against you. So what is one of the things that you can absolutely do to help your body work with you and that is very simple and it's very basic and it's give your body the tools, the foundation that it needs to be successful and to give you the right signals. So let me just give you an example. Sugar and certain uh, products like wheat are highly addictive and stimulate your brain. So when you eat these things, when you eat these foods, they actually stimulate your brain, they stimulate your appetite, they tell you that you want more of that food in addition to you know, uh, encouraging belly uh, fat gain and all these other sorts of negative consequences for eating these foods, right? Or maybe I should say ingredients because they're not really foods, right? Sugar and wheat. But what happens is when you eat those foods, it's literally working against your biology and your biochemistry and it's working against, so it's not, it's not like, this is something I wanna reiterate quickly to you, it's not a, a willpower thing, okay? I've met so many people that have extraordinary willpower and they have extraordinary discipline and they absolutely can do that. But if they're not choosing the right foods and the foods are working against their biology and their biochemistry, it doesn't really matter what your willpower is if that food is telling your body to crave more, to want more, that you're still hungry even though you've eaten enough, that sort of thing. So it absolutely works against you. So within the never tell yourself all or nothing mentality, there are some caveats and that is that you have to start eating real food. You have to start eating the foods that sit, give your body the appropriate signals. Because what is food? I mean, literally, what is it? If you think about a calorie, it's defined as energy, right? That is exactly what food is. It's energy, it's fuel for your cells. It's actually information for your cells. So every single bite that you take in tells your cells how to act, how to behave, what systems to do, how to function in your body. So it's extremely, extremely important that what we eat is good fuel, is good information for our bodies. One thing that's really interesting is how we feed our children versus how we feed ourselves. So when they're babies, right, or when you're pregnant, often women are extremely conscientious about what they put in their bodies and when their baby comes out, what they feed their babies for the first one or two years, right? So why is that any different? Why do we take less care for our bodies? We know that what we feed them is very important to develop their immune system, to help their growth, to help their cognitive learning, to help all of these things grow, right? That doesn't change just because you hit 20, 30, 40, right? It's still the same. Food is information for yourself. So never, ever, ever tell yourself that you cannot ever have something like a chocolate chip cookie. Just tell yourself, that you need to find a different way to eat it. You need to be able to make it with different ingredients. So just as an example, I do things with like almond flour and coconut flour instead of wheat flour. That avoids the processed wheat flour. You've probably heard about glyphosate, which is Roundup, that they spray on grain products now and wheat 
that wheat is included. It's also been extraordinarily hybridized, and so it does all those things I was talking about, stimulating your appetite. It spikes your blood sugar quite significantly. It does all these things. So instead of choosing that, like the conventional chocolate chip cookie, I just make my own with almond flour, coconut flour, something that's more natural, something that doesn't stimulate my blood sugar. It doesn't like crash um, my blood sugar later. It doesn't, um, you know, make me crave a lot. It doesn't do all those things. So it has a different biological reaction in my body and I can still have it, but it crushes that craving and it still works for me. Okay. So the other thing within this uh, uh, umbrella of never say all or nothing, don't get into that mentality, is what I say, hashtag nutrition. And I've written a blog post on it. I've done a podcast on it. So if you want to dig more into specifically what that is, go and listen to those or read those. But um, basically, it's finding out the right nutrition for you, for your personal body, because no one person is the same. They're just not. I'm, I can never give you the exact calorie amount that you need or the exact macros that you need. It's, don't do that anyway. You need to learn how to listen to your body, but we can only listen to our bodies when our bodies are giving us the appropriate signals. And that goes back to choosing the foods that signal our body effectively and appropriately, the way it's designed to work together, because it's really designed quite incredibly. Okay, so never tell yourself you can never have a chocolate chip cookie, that's number one. Number two is to plan ahead, because when we get really hungry or hangry, as uh, is the common term now, we are way more likely to make poor decisions, right? So why does this happen? So when you're really hungry or you've gone a really long time in between meals, maybe your blood sugar starts to crash a little bit. So depending on where you are in your healthy lifestyle, maybe your blood sugar still goes up and down a little bit and you haven't been able to stabilize it. So if you go a long time in between meals, your blood sugar starts crashing, then what happens? You start getting emotionally really moody, right? You start maybe getting a little tired, a little fatigued, so you start getting cranky. And you start craving things like sugar and processed carbohydrates. So when your body gives you cravings, it's usually trying to tell you something. So in this case, the reason it's craving sugar and processed carbohydrates is because it wants that quick glucose fix so that it can boost up your energy, okay? So it's really important, one thing, you know, I'm sure all of you know that it's important to balance your blood sugar and what we eat tremendously affects that. And two of the worst things that you can do is process carbohydrates and sugar. But that is what you're gonna crave when you're hungry and when you're getting hangry and we've gone a long time without your uh, food. So by the way, the healthier you get, the more uh, your blood sugar is stable, the better you eat, the more micronutrients you have, all that kind of good stuff, the more stable your blood sugar then becomes and the longer you can go between meals without having that hangry feeling, without having that crash. So just kind of something to think about. Like that can be a goal for you. But a lot of people still struggle with this. So one thing to think about is to plan ahead always. Like always have your water with you. That's that's number one, right? But I pack snacks like always. I, it's hard to find me without snacks in my purse. In fact, we were out of town recently and we were eating in kind of a, a public situation. And uh, so there was meal provided, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's a meal provided and we couldn't eat probably two thirds of what was there because of our choices and, and food sensitivities and things like that. So we're sitting down and we had some things like baked beans and uh, green beans and things like that. And, and me and Patrick and Keegan are sitting there eating these. And uh, it wasn't quite enough and we were pretty hungry. So I pull out my bag and I have like this uh, pile of uh, RX bars. I'm like, hey, you guys want anything? And people were laughing at me because they're like, yo, mom's always prepared. She's got snacks in her purse. I'm like, yeah. But the, you know, I have to do that because I don't want to get anywhere and be so hungry that I make a bad decision. Um, and I also, you know, don't want to compromise on my food sensitivities and my health goals and all these kinds of things. So I always, always, always have snacks prepared. So whatever that means for you, if it's fruit, if it's a layer bar, if it's an RX bar, if it's a jerky, you know, nuts, whatever it is that's easy to take for you, always plan ahead. And, you know, planning ahead comes into if you're going out to eat as well. Um, I always check out the menus and all that kind of stuff. So, but when you're talking about breaking that cycle, it's really... Um, helpful to have a plan and to never be stuck somewhere where or put in a situation 
where you are getting really hungry and you, you just make that bad choice right? So planning ahead can really kind of help you get into the right habits that help you break that mentality. All right. So last thing, and this is one of my favorite steps, third step. The first step is don't tell yourself all or nothing ever. Just, just change the ingredients so you can have that brownie, you can have that chocolate chip cookie, but it's not going to have the devastating effects. And then it's not on the table. It's not off the table for you anymore. So it's not as um, it doesn't have that control over you. The second one is to plan ahead and make sure that you are not stuck in a situation where you're so hungry, you're going to make a bad choice. And the third step is to have craving crushers on hand. I guess that's what I call them. So, um, so what I like to do is make my favorite batch of brownies and I keep them in the freezer. So tip one and tip three are sort of combined, but what I like to have uh, on hand are some of my favorite treats. And again, I make them with different ingredients. So one of my favorite brownie recipes is made with a can of chickpeas. So essentially it's like chickpeas, honey, cocoa, uh, I think those are the main ingredients, maybe some vanilla, something like that, maybe a little bit of Enjoy Life chocolate chips. And uh, I make those up, they make like 16 brownies, I let them cool, I maybe keep a couple out, and I individually freeze the rest of them. And so if there is a time where I'm having like an intense craving, maybe it's around your cycle, maybe you were extremely stressed and so your body is craving some extra sweet and carbohydrate, but you don't wanna have like a ho-ho or a Pop-Tart, and you're like, I really wanna stay on track and I'm trying to break this mentality of I can't ever have sweets and I don't wanna binge on something. Knowing that something is healthier for you just like gives you peace about eating it. So the fact that it tastes good and it crushes your cravings, the stress is like totally non-existent when you know that it's made with whole food ingredients. So it's like a win, 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 win that if you think about looking at like a zebra cake, for example, Take an honest look at that and be like, what is this going to do to my body, right? Well, it's going to stimulate my brain. It's going to cause me to crave more of it. It's going to incredibly spike my blood sugar, which means I'm going to crash later and be on this roller coaster. And you, know, you do that too much, and that's what leads to diabetes and, uh, you know, just things we don't want. Um, so you look at a zebra cake and you're like, is there any micronutrient value to this whatsoever? No, like there's literally no value in this. It's, it's all, the only thing it can do to my body is harm my body. But if you look at like the chickpea brownie, for example, you're like, honey has a lot of micronutrients and vitamins in it. Chickpeas have a ton of micronutrients and vitamins in it. Cocoa powder has a lot of benefits as well. Um, and so you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, is this the best thing for me to eat? You know, like if you compare it to broccoli, maybe not. However, is it much, much better than a zebra cake? And does it still provide some nutritional content and some nutritional value in my life? Yes then it takes away the guilt and it allows you to crush that craving because it tastes amazing and chocolatey and someone slapped peanut butter on it the other day and made it even more delicious, then you know, then your mentality totally shifts and you're like, I can have this whenever I want to have it. It's not wreaking havoc on my goals, on my body, and that mentality of all or nothing and food is the enemy then goes away because you now have an outlet that is much healthier for your brain and your body at the same time. Those are my tips for you today, guys. Three steps to help you have a better relationship with food. I hope they've been helpful. If you want more content like this, or if you're interested in daily tips and freebies that I offer and things like that, make sure you jump into my Stop Dieting and Live, my, Live Your Life Facebook group. It's free. And in a couple weeks, I'm going to be running a, uh, a PMS, well, a Hack Your PMS <laughs> special. It's like five steps to hacking your PMS. Um, so if that's something you struggle with, if you have some hormone imbalances, if you have an awful monthly cycle, hop in there. You're going to learn everything you need to know. Um, check out my podcast, the Tiny Fit Diva podcast. I uh, come up with a new topic, and I drop a new podcast every Monday for you to listen to on your way to work or whenever you have a chance. And uh, I think that's it. So if you have any questions, let me, oh, one more thing. Yeah, you have two more days to register for my Get Gutsy group. It's eight weeks. I teach you everything you need to know about gut health. We go into a lot of information, a lot of nutrition. You're provided with tons of resources. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This group's already revving up and kind of getting mentally prepared, so I'm really excited about it. 
but it officially starts Monday and I don't want to let anybody in the group after that. So I am closing registration on Saturday. If you're interested, make sure you check it out now so that you have enough time to shop, to print out all the materials, to get mentally prepared, to, to hop into the Facebook group and uh, get started. So two more days for that. So if you're interested, let me know and uh, hop over to my Stop Dieting uh, group and say hello. So happy Thursday, guys. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any other topics you'd like to have covered.